If you don't shut the f up, I'm gonna tape your face and sew you to the floor. Me and this mother ain't never getting along. This shit, this dude's out of his mind. We ain't doing this party. Earlier we were talking about the 80s, and now I'm starting to think about this, and how different like today is, like growing up as a child of the 80s, I'm a child of the 80s, you're a child of the 80s. When I was a kid, my parents let me go outside, there were no phones, and I'm sure they did with you too, and they didn't, nobody cared where you went, as long as you came back for dinner at nighttime, right? And there was something that, and the pedals were metal, right, mm -hmm. on the bikes. They would shave your shins right oh, off. Oh, yeah, when they hit the shins. And no, nobody had helmets. Everybody fell and busted their head open. I remember people having rocks stuck in their skin, everything, right? You went rocks on the here. I still have scars here from rocks. You went on a construction site you didn't belong on. Yes. My cousins ate, like, silver, you know, like, coins and stuff. I mean, everything under the sun. Light and that fire. Would, that would freak people out today, right? Breaking glass. So is there something to what I'm going to dig into now is going to lead into your business? Or is there something to that kind of grit and that kind of toughness that is built by exposing you to that type of stuff. Whereas like now people want to cradle everyone. We live in a world full of snowflakes. Mm -hmm. You can't say anything you, mm -hmm. without offending someone. Uh, and sometimes people need to get their asses kicked, right? I mean, oh, it's yeah. important. Because whether you like it or not. I want to offend somebody. Li life is, life is going to kick your ass whether you like it or not. That's what I always tell people like, you can lock yourself in an ivory tower and try to hide and get a warm blankie, but that's not going to prepare you for life. Mm -mm. Like, you're going to meet assholes. You're going to get let down. Life is going to disappoint you. And it's like protecting someone and wrapping them in a blanket and giving them a bottle is not a way to prepare them for life. So there's, there's something interesting about that generation in that I'm so grateful that my dad was that way. It was just like, it just, I think it built... A certain level of character now it's a little more dangerous to let your kids outside but i i think i want to speak more to like the development of character and like that grit and like not coddling people so much and how important that is in preparation for business if you could dig into that a little bit from your own perspective but yeah i think um i think you know with that type of pressure you know, I'm just thinking about my childhood and, and people around and everything. You make some and, and it breaks some. So it makes some great diamonds, but it also crumbles some people along the way, right? And I think that the, the, the environment was trying to get away from that or just harness it or like focusing on the bad part. But I think that, you know, our, our team, and, and I think about our team, and I think about how we haven't been the easiest on them. Maybe we should have been or whatever, but we haven't been. And, 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 and we lost some people. But the people we kept are so strong, like they're you, they're unbreakable. Our team's unbreakable. I mean, that that's what happens when you do that. It, and we didn't do it by design. We did it by accident, just because we were tough. We did everything the hard way. Tough on ourselves. Tough on our team. Small circle, you know. And, and, and but but learned that to open that up. But you still have to be able to apply pressure. And I think the time to do that's you know early on in the interview process. You know, within the rules. You know of interviewing. Yeah, I think it's a, I saw this guy's video, and I mean, it's kind of funny, but he's like, we live in a world full of snow, snowflakes. It's, I laugh about it, it's kind of true. It's not, not everybody, but I think like, like you said, there's a line, right? There could be, you could be too extreme one way, like too much pressure, too much pushing, you know, too much of the iron fist also is not good. And then too much coddling on this side is also not good. I so it's like trying to find that sort of, happy medium that center point where i want to come back to it but i want i have a but question go ahead. I have any, just, go ahead. just uh so i was watching arnold schwarzenegger's new series on netflix did you watch that by chance it's like a documentary yeah it's like i haven't three, seen it yet but three of them so he was in there and he grew up in austria and he was talking about how hard his dad was in the war and back to what i was saying and i know real examples of people that nobody knows but or not nobody but you know not everybody knows but arnold said you know he had a brother who ended up getting into a car accident and dying, but the dad broke the brother. He basically broke the brother, but he created Arnold. He created this monster. We were talking. I was talking earlier to Tristy about you know, you know anything. He would just do anything. He had that that special grit, but there was also, you know, the other side of that. And I've seen that. I've seen it in a lot of families. So I know what you mean, and I don't know what what the balance is there, 
I think the balance there is, is uh, the trust. You know, you can be hard on somebody um, if they trust you. One of the people in my company that I'm the closest with, I, I hate to even um, be hard on them, you know, because I'm harder on them than I am on other people. But, but he can take it. You know what I mean? And, 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 but I'm, and I'm not hard on him often. But when it's necessary, I'm extremely hard on him. And it's, we respect each other. It's not a big deal. You know, I think that that trust and that you can't do it too much. There has to be some respect there, you know? Yeah. You have to earn that over time. But you also have to be hard on people early on. And when they go in and even when they're trying to create that barrier of you can't do that to me, that's the time to move in early. I haven't done it, but I've seen, you know, other people in the company do it. And I learned from watching them. They're like, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. And they move in on them and they, and they, you know, they're hard on them when they try to build that barrier of I can't handle that. You can't be hard on me. That's when you move in. And if they can't handle it, you're like, okay, growth stops. Growth stops. You're great where you're at. Everything's fine. Let's just back up. You don't want to grow anymore. When you want to grow, we're right here for you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does that get yeah. to what we were talking about? Yeah, yeah, it does. It's like you you want to you want to give them the support they need, but you also want to apply pressure when necessary. It's got to be both. It can't yeah, be, and if you can't, can't apply, be the iron fist all the time. Right, but if you can't apply the pressure when necessary and they're putting up barriers, but they're still a great asset, it's okay but you're trying to apply pressure to push it to the next level to get more. And if they're not going to allow you to do it right then, you know, okay, for now they've reached their threshold. And I was talking earlier and I was saying, well, nothing will make you move more than somebody else taking pressure and creating success that you were ahead of. And I think that, that, that in an organization or in, in, in any environment that that'll do it. You know, if a competitor, or a coworker, or somebody in the same field, if they if they took pressure that you didn't, but didn't have the skill you did, and they move along further and they get growth fast, and you see people paying attention to them and pour in their their time and their their assets into them, you feel like, oh man, oh now I want that. I kind of want that. And then if if you're the boss or the employer or, or, the, or the owner or anything like that. You need to be fair. When they come back and they want that pressure now, give it to them. You know, if they open the door, you know, be there for them. You know, you shut them down, let them go. If they come around, bring it back. But I want to dig into more what we were talking about earlier, which was, I think you said something along the lines of, I was finished off in Ohio before I got to Virginia. And so I'd like to talk about your experience and growing up in Ohio and how that was different from the Virginia life. Walk I didn't get that. finished in Virginia. Bradley got finished. No, you in got Virginia. finished in Ohio. Yeah. Um, That's. I want to hear about that. I think. What, well, I think. Here's what I think. I think. Looking back on it, I think I was around a bunch of wonderful, wonderful people. I think that you were. There was limited information at that time. When you see an opportunity coming from less opportunity, you take advantage of it. That's that's the upper hand I have. Is when I came to DC, I, the people that were the kids that were born and raised there that had you know everything, access to everything, they were extremely sharp, but they just didn't have the endurance, and I think there's a certain type of endurance that comes with that. So that's what gave you the lesson. edge. I think so, endurance. Yeah, for sure. Endurance I don't even of... think so. I know so. I have endurance. My family has endurance. That's what takes you far. Mm -hmm. If I make a mistake, I'm not stopping. If I make two mistakes, I'm not stopping. If I make 10 mistakes, I'm really not stopping because I'm going to be sick about it. But I'm not stopping. And I've made more than that. Mistakes. You know? Mistakes are important. <laughs> People are like, how do you, they're like, how did you succeed? I'm like, double your rate of failure. Keep failing and eventually you'll succeed, right? Like you're going to learn, you're going to learn one way or the other, right? You got to walk through it. If you're afraid of failure, you're never going to succeed. But if you're willing to fail, maybe you won't fail, but you have to be willing to fail, and then you might succeed, right? Mm -hmm. That's kind of the idea. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely not scared. Yeah, you, know? you got to be willing to I, it may Maybe a little nervous, but never scared. New moves are exciting. The unknown, you know? 
I think I like the unknown a little bit too much. <laughs> it's risky, right? It's risky. I know it is. Yeah, I like to stand on the edge. I'm like, well, uh, anyway, I don't need to do any research. I just jump right off. Fuck mm -hmm. it. You yeah, know, we'll see what happens. Maybe the parachute will come out. Maybe it won't. <laughs> so you got to watch a little. You have to watch that a little bit. That's another one of those middle ground things. It's like a little too much pressure, not enough love and support, and then like not analyzing enough. Like my head's in the clouds, and I'm thinking about the big picture, and I'm like, fuck it, we'll figure it out. Let's go. You know, like yeah. let's jump out of the plane. So too much of that is also a little dangerous. So yeah. I think that's where the sort of team comes in, that there's a dynamic and a harmonious structure within your team. You know, it takes a team, it takes a village to make it happen. Not one person does it, right? Mm -hmm. There is every monolithic empire that ever rose fell. So having a team of, we were talking about earlier, tens, tens in character, helps people like me, like I have a team of tens, they help me stay stable, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'd be a big fat head that just falls over like China on the edge of the table. Mm -hmm. So I think it's interesting and important to have a team, a great culture, a beautiful culture of people that you could trust with great character that you can count on. And they help sort of complement and balance your traits. It's like this, this, uh, my first therapist told me, he's like, your strength is your weakness. You got to be careful. You know, it's kind of a little mysterious in that, but it's true, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like the very thing, like you said, your willingness to kind of power through, break down the walls and do what's ever ne necessary, which is what you developed by growing up in Ohio is what led you to your version of success. But a little bit too much of well, that. It's, you, it's you almost might... a little dysfunctional, right? Because yeah. you're so not scared of failing that you'll fail just to prove you can do it and keep moving, you know? I mean, not like intentionally, but you'll just take a shot. I mean, I, initially early on, you know, even, but I think we're past that point now. Everything's yeah. very systematic and thought out, you know? Yeah, you're on the other side of the rainbow. We're on the other side of the rainbow. And I think that, that seeing, looking back is, you know, why you want to teach other people. Because it's going to happen anyways. They're going to learn anyways. Why not just go in there and, you know, do it? it yeah. You might be able to save them some time with your experience, basically. A lot of time and a lot of money. And maybe the difference between success or not, you know, because maybe they might not have the endurance they need to make all the mistakes, but maybe they have a better skill somewhere else and they can hope, you know, or not hope, but harness that skill because you taught them this or they, they early ad adopted these things that solved the problems. Yeah. When you were in those situations where you were like in a pressure cooker and like you said, you need that endurance. I know it's interesting you bring up that word endurance and I'm like, God, I could totally relate to that where I'm like, I'm in a pressure cooker. I'm in a pressure situation. I'm like, and in my head, I'm like, fuck, this is fucked up. Can I get through this thing? <laughs> you know, you, like, and you're not really sure, but you just sort of hang on. And because you've done it before, you know that you can break through. And I'm sure you've had. that term from is when I see the modern the modern worker and the modern workplace coming up they're smarter than anything they have more access to information they have the skills the brains the guts they have everything but because of the speed at which they get everything they don't have the same endurance like when I was younger and I wanted something I might have had to wait a year and a half to get it you know you had to look at a magazine find a magazine order it wait three weeks for it to get there now you're just like scanning your face and you have it in your in your front door in two hours, you know? So I think that's kind of where endurance, I know that it's key. And I think that if you teach it, you know, teach it to kids or if you just talk about it and they pay attention to it because they're so smart and they know they need it, I think you can help them there. But I also think that they don't need it because they're so smart and the information's there so fast. So yeah. it's really, I don't know, you know, where that's going to end up. We'll have to see. But yeah, I know that hard. I can save somebody time. Yeah, it's hard to tell, right? Too much easy access and getting something too fast, like being expedient, sometimes can backfire on you. It's not always a good thing. Yeah, it makes you a little weaker. I mean, I sure like it. But I, I, I think do. most I love people it. like Amazon <laughs> being there in two seconds. I love it. Jeff Bezos knew what he was doing with that one, mm -hmm. and he gets better and better at it. But, yeah, there's something to that, like not, they call it delaying gratification, right? That's mm -hmm. like the fancy term for it. There's something to like 
not getting the cookie right away, you know, so to speak, like something to like delaying that gratification. I want to dig into the business, the auto ballers. No, I'm kidding. Auto <laughs> I want to dig into the auto giants when we were the show or the business. Well, I want to talk about the business because there's three of you and you're all so different. Now I've spoken with all three of you. You guys are all so different in a good way, which I think actually it's like what we were talking about. It kind of adds this interesting balance, you know, mm -hmm. in a business. And so when I was talking with you before, you're like, I see myself as the glue, you know, like the cohesive character in this whole. Scheme. I did say that. Yeah. And it's I learned that from somebody else. Yeah. And it's like, let's talk about that a little bit. I'm kind of curious, like that's important, isn't it? Because you don't want people running a hundred different directions with a hundred different ideas and everyone not being aligned philosophically or, you know, let's talk a little bit about the. Well, I think for, for me, it was just a, almost my niche or what was needed. You know, it's like, what can I do? Where can I bring value? And, you know, I, I can do anything, right? But I enjoy um, keeping a team together. I enjoy building a team. I also enjoy keeping a team together. And I know that sometimes people need a little bit of extra attention or a little bit of extra conversation and it goes a long way and it, and it goes in and it ties into everything. If it's authentic, if it's, if it's bullshit, it's bullshit, right? But if it's real, it's real. You go in, you sit down, you talk to somebody. It's no different than a friendship, a, a relationship with you know, my family, my wife, anything. If you're authentic, you go in, you sit down, you talk about it, you're accountable, you're, you're, you're building trust and that trust goes a long way when you ask somebody to do something that they trust you, they know you're asking for a reason, you're accountable and you're, and you're talking to them and, and you care about them just as much as you care about what the mission or the values or whatever it is you're trying to do. And I think there's a lot of trust that comes in there and being the glue. And, and, and when you see somebody maybe coming undone a little bit, it might be something they have going on personal, but you can always bring it back in, tie it back into the business because they're passionate about work and they're there all the time too. And income's necessary, you know, it might not be the, the you know the, the, the most important thing, but it's a necessary thing. And if you can help somebody, you know, through that time period, that's a lot of trust, I think. What's the hardest decision you ever made in that position? That was the best decision you ever made. Can you think of one? The hardest decision that I ever made in that position. That turned out to be the best decision. One that you were unsure about, one that you thought you were going to be wrong about, but you were right about after all. I think taking the emotions out of it, it happens all the time. I'm right about it all the time. I don't have a one scenario. I don't want to tie it down to one person one time. I think that, you know, maybe covering, taking the emotion, my emotion out of it and addressing their emotions and letting them know how emotions can make you make bad decisions. And maybe somebody's not there yet, but they're going down that path and you can kind of do a, a one minute redirect, you know, but it might take more than a minute, but still you, the, the redirection point, you just, you talk about it. You talk about how these things could be, you say, Hey, I feel like you could be going through this, you know, and, and it's going to hurt me. It's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt the company. I want to be able to make sure you're comfortable here. I want to make sure that if there's something that we can help with, let's do it now. If not, then, you know, you can't, but I want to try and do that. And I think it happens all the time. I know it happens all the time and, and it's really just caring about somebody, caring about their well-being, caring about their, even when you're upset, even when you're right, or even when they're wrong, it doesn't matter. They're still human. They still have emotions and they still need a leader. And I think, you know, sometimes you need to be a leader at that point. Yeah. So it's like focusing on the culture that I want to, maybe now we could talk about culture. Like that's kind of what it sounds like, right? Keeping the culture together, making sure that everyone's aligned. Keeping, keeping I think it. everybody it pitches into culture in their own way. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, keeping it going, keeping, keeping the team intact, keeping the knowledge together, you know, letting them know that as a team we're stronger and they're part of that team. I think that builds the culture, you know. Time builds culture too. When somebody comes into an organization and they see somebody who's been there for a long time and stays, they're like, people stay here. Why? Well, because they care about us. I care about them. I like them. You know, I don't like this, but there's a lot I do like. You know, not me. I'm saying I'm just talking in third person or whatever. But yeah, I, I think that that's, that's where that comes into play there and building a strong culture. 
Yeah, culture is important. Mm-hmm. And the, the better it is, the harder it is to, to build on. But then once once you get that momentum, you know, the compound effect of the culture, it just kind of, you have what everybody wants. And that's, you know, that's where we're at. And, 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 it, and, and it's a conscious decision, you know. Let's 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 work on our culture. Let's build a better company. Let's take care. Let's care about the people more. Yeah, you know, that, the organizations that care about their people stand out. Period. Yeah, you they know? do. Absolutely. Time tested, battle tested, stress tested. If they truly care about their people, you know, it's like uh, Hendrick. He's one. He was mentioned in the 21 Laws of Leadership, Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. He owns all the car dealerships, and the way he his thing was people, 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 people. And he's massive success. You know, it's been around a long time. What behaviors should one avoid in business in a leadership role? You have to stay positive. You can't be cascading negative energy down. You know, even if you're having a bad day, I think that you need to. You have to drop down positive energy. You can't drop down negative energy, and I do it. I've done it, and then if you do it, you have to go in and correct it. You have to be a bit accountable for it, you know. Like, hey, I was negative. I was saying this. It wasn't right. That's the only way to correct it. You know, it's it's like real simple. Like, if I have a department head or somebody I'm talking to, and I know that they did something wrong when we were trying to implement something, and then and then they're they're kind of trying to implement it, and they know that it's right, but they're still dealing with the fact that they already told everybody it was a bad idea. I tell them, I say, you know, when I told you I didn't like this or I was this was stupid, and then I realized later I was wrong. What I do? Like, well, you said you were wrong. I said, and then what? And then I asked you to implement it, right? But it but it, you couldn't do it. You, I couldn't have asked you to implement it if I didn't admit I was wrong when I said it was a bad idea. I would just go in and be accountable to your entire staff right away. Get that out of the way right now. I think you can, you know, that, that's the recovery from that negativity. Yeah. Because I can get negative. Well, we all can. Yeah. I don't, I don't like all, it, you know. We're all But I can't stay away from the business either. So I, I have to be there no matter what. I think you can protect a lot of that by protecting the culture and not having the people that bring that out of you around. I think early on, you know, high producer – bringing out that culture not good you know even for you because then you can't lead the best you can lead because of that Does that make yeah. sense? yeah it's so important to have we protect we try to do the best we can to protect our energy here how would you describe your company how would i describe our company currently hungry hungry for more yeah and what is more where are you guys headed what's the model the model is acquisition, expansion, acquisitions. You know, we need to get to a billion in revenue through acquisitions. You know, I would say, you know, I, for, you know, rooftops is a thing, like how many different franchises and rooftops. But I think, you know, we're, it's it's more about revenue, you know, at this point. So, you know, getting the right deals, the right locations, um, the right brands and building that culture out, you know, making them manageable, making them you know, interchangeable, seamless, where you can move the employees around, move the customers around, and, and really, really show, you know, how well we can work with any brand, any manufacturer, any employee, any customer, any, anything, you know, yeah. just, and, 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 and when we get there and we're not doing good, let's go ahead and dig in, let's be accountable and let's do better, you know, and we really want to be able to take everything, that we, any, anything we touch, we want to be able to take it to the top place in the market. Yeah, it sounded like you guys are going to scale pretty fast This just in this year. I was talking with Joey a little bit. Yeah, this year is probably going to be huge, I think. A big jump from where you're at top line to the new top line. Oh, yeah, the new top line will come down pretty quick. I think next year will be even more radical, you know. That's but this crazy. year is going to be huge. The next three years is just going to be so much fun <clears throat> and so much work. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're going to be busy, busy, busy. But th what's going to come out of it is just going to be, you know, remarkable, epic. You yeah, know, it's sounding like fun, it. exciting, hard, tough. <clears throat> yeah, scaling is always tough. Uh -huh. Like each level of a level up, you meet new assholes. It's like you go through a new door, and then the people that are in that sort of space, they're just waiting to cut your ass down as you're moving up, to mm -hmm. the, as you keep moving up. Fucking crazy, dude. Yeah, I'm sure we're going to run into plenty of that.
So let's talk about role models. What role models do you admire? Earlier I was talking about Charlie Munger and who's gone now and Warren Buffett and there obviously are others, but who are your role models in business and or life, wherever, any role models? Uh, Joey is my number one role model. My big brother, he always has been, period. Nobody will ever be a bigger role model to me than him. I don't care, you know, but other than that, um, I want to be a role model. I haven't always been, I want to be a role model. I don't know if that's the right answer to what you're asking me, but I want to be a role model. You know, I had children, you know, I think about it, you know, I think back over my my entire life. Here's why I say I want to be a role model. This is what I was tracking towards, is you're sitting back, and I, I sat back for many years, and I was like, I can do that, I can do that, I can do that, I can do that. And I would watch the reaction around the room, and you can see they think I'm bullshitting. Like, you, you actually think I'm, I can't do it, right? That's motivation. Now, here's the thing. I wasn't being the person who could do that, right? I, I might have been somewhat of the person. I might have had the intellect, the ideas, but I wasn't showing it on every bucket, like Andy said. You know, fill every bucket. You know, every bucket. If you're not filling every bucket, you're not winning. And that was the thing, is really making sure that you're filling every bucket. Yeah. And, 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 you know, the way he said that, he brought that to light, you know, he's a role model, honestly. Yeah. He is, I would say. You know, yeah. the way he said, the way he broke that down and the way he did it and captivated everybody and put that energy in them so that they could go do better, that's powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I, I have my brother that does that also. So I'm, I'm, you know, but to have somebody, you know, outside of family that would do that. Yeah. I think that's huge. Yeah. I mean, there are people that come to mind like this acquisition model is pretty, pretty interesting because <clears throat> there's people like, Hey, let's build a company and let's dump it, you know, and make that money and let's get that cash and then move to the next thing. Then there's this sort of longer play, which is sounds like this is your guy's model where you're buying revenue essentially like Schwartzman, BlackRock, um, Blackstone and Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, mm -hmm. that's kind of their model, right? Mm -hmm. They bought C's candy like in the 70s and they mm -hmm. still own it. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, every year they just keep raising the prices or Geico or any number of acquisitions and they keep buying that revenue and it turns into this monster over time. So it sounds like that's your model, which I, I personally like that model better too. I don't, I don't think I'll sell. We're builders also. I'll build, but yeah. I think, it, you know, if it's necessary, it depends on, you know, the real estate, the location, the brand, all that. But I think the acquisition model, you're, you're gaining so much. You're gaining, you know, the good and bad of new culture. And, yeah. And, and then you're learning how to blend it, which is such a, you know, high return on your time when you, when you can do mm -hmm. that, you, you know, your investment on, on your, in yourself and what you can do and what you bring to the table, the value you bring to the manufacturers, the value you bring to the employees, you know, the value you bring, you know, in the deal in general, all the way across the board to the banks. Yeah. I think people are misled when they talk about like, I mean, not always, but in many cases, especially with social media, cause you're just swiping it's 30 second clips or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, young people, young entrepreneurs up and coming oftentimes I think are misled to the reality of what business actually is. You know, uh, be on a fast track to go to Hawaii, you know, and lay on the beach with a cocktail with an umbrella you're in gonna, it. <laughs> you know, you're definitely like, not going to Probably be not. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You're blowing your brains out. If you're lucky, you break through and you get to that next phase. And so I just don't think people really realize what it actually is. And I think I've had a number of businesses now. I've built them, lost them, built them, sold them, every, and everything in between. And I, I think there's an advantage to having done that because when you go to do another venture you understand you're like you know what you're getting into i think there's there's part of understanding the business and i think that's yeah. a huge thing but i think for for myself personally the number one thing that makes this so much more exciting 
is the work I've done on myself. The people around me know I've done work on myself. I know I've done work on myself. My kids are young. They know I've done work on myself. And to be able to do that work and then bring that, that, that new, better version of yourself to a new acquisition, and you're learning as you go, and it's just keeping you busy. The goal's huge. You know, let's look for a billion in revenue, then let's look for three, you know? But the goals are huge, and it's so exciting, but, but the work that you're doing on yourself creates so much strength and so much endurance, and it makes you so much better that what you do for everybody else is so much better. Yeah. So even if you can have the you can have the best business acumen in the world, but you have got to be able to go in and develop yourself also on every level. Every bucket's got to be full. And that's when I think when those things come together, you're unstoppable. Yeah, it's true. And I, we're not at the unstoppable point, but we're not going to be you know, we'll be there soon. Yeah, it's true. There's no better to wait to there's no better way to have an effect on your environment than to, than to change yourself it's oh, obvious you, right yeah the problem is me all the time but yeah, it's I, crazy how that works huh? but i think too you know one of the things that what's so exciting about it is when i went to vet, go in and develop is is i wanted to make sure and i was trying to say this a little bit earlier i want to make sure that i'm not that guy that says that says i could have done all that you know, you're 60, you're 70, and you're like, I could have done that. I watched him do that. I don't want to be reporting about all these people that did all these amazing things. And I was right there and knew how to do them. So I have to take action. And the first thing you have to take action on is yourself all the time. If you don't make that action the first one, you're not going to get the, the most benefit out of the next action, which is whatever you're trying to get done. So you have to balance that. And it's, it's not just those two things. But in this scenario, our conversation, what we're talking about, those two things are it. Yeah, it's like my wife will ask me sometimes, she'll be like, aren't you happy yet? And I'm like, she misunderstands that I'm just not satisfied. I'm happy. Fulfilled. I love my life. Yeah, like I just want to do more stuff. Satisfied is a know, good one. I haven't used that enough. Yeah, it's like I, I'm just, you know, there. I have a list of things I'm trying to get to. That's all. Yeah, you know, well, and she'll, I, she'll say, "Aren't you happy?" Sometimes my wife will, and I'll say, "Yeah." She'll say, "Aren't you happy yet?" I'm, like, I'm, I'm very know? happy. Yeah, I'm just not excited. You know? Yeah, I just want to go further. It's like I want the Wayne Manor library. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I want to live in Pelican Hill. I want my own card. Yes. I want a robe and house slippers. I want to smoke a pipe. Yes. I always wanted to pass out in a recliner in my study. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yes. The when war room. I, when I'm retired. With my yes. Kids. And then have like my kids and my yeah, grandkids, and the grandkids around me. Yeah, everything, right? My grandma used to pass out in her chair with pizza and Diet Pepsi. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm so f***ing jealous, dude. And she smoked cigarettes like this long. With the ashes she's on them, alive. right? <laughs> she's still alive, dude. That's funny you I'm say like, that. I'm like, she's living the dream, dude. My grandmother's been smoking since the 80s, probably before that. And she still smokes. Yeah, you know dude, I mean? it's She's crazy. 95. It's crazy. My mom died before her, and it's just like... And it's not that I want that exactly, but it's just sort of like I have, you know, the life to live is the one by design, mm -hmm. you know, and like I know I, I think I keep refining it, that and I think all of us do. I think you have goals, you have these ambitions and you have targets that you're trying to hit. And I think they change and they grow. But I think uh, the one thing that I think about all the time and I've been talking about a lot recently and obviously you guys understand this is that you have to be able to you have to be willing to execute without a clear purpose if you ever expect you to get to where you want to go to reach your goals right mm -hmm. may not have a clear purpose you got to have the balls to fucking step in the cold water or step in that jungle of this unknown and if you ever expect you're going to get to where you want to go right i mean you got to be able to do it. Yeah, you got to be, be willing, willing to do you it. You have to be willing to jump. I mean, if not, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, like if this may or may not work. Everybody that ever made it ever jumped when they weren't ready. Yeah. And, you know, so think about no it other. like with kids. You know, how often are people planning to have kids? You know, and they made the best decision in their life, you know? Yeah, just I wasn't planning on having kids. You know? Yeah. And then now what? Can't live My without them. My wife just hit me up about another kid today. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I'm like, I got five kids, dude. <laughs> She's like, are you sure? I'm like, I think I'm sure. I think I might be sure.
on that one, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. No more kids for you? Mm. No. Yeah, I'm no. good. I'm good. Five's pretty good. I it have fills two. up a whole damn couch. If my wife That's wanted enough. to have another kid, I would. <laughs> if she doesn't, it's really up to her. You know? But we yeah. want to be able to, you know, enjoy the time with these kids and, yeah, you know, really, like, really focus on them, trying to make excellent human beings out of them and well-rounded, teach them everything. They're awesome. We're just so, we're so, we're so lucky. We have, you know, these wonderful children. You know how it is. Stu is everything. I'm, I'm looking at the time because I want to go home to my babies, actually. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm here now, and that's the number one thing I'm thinking about. Yeah, you know I haven't I mean? seen them in three days. I've been gone. I literally want to go home and watch a movie in bed with them, you know? Yeah, it's the greatest. I know, there's nothing like it in the whole world.